Alright guys, so why not do some comic reviews at like midnight because you can't sleep? <laughs> Insomniac's a horrible thing, I hate it. Anyway, so we're going to be talking about, first and foremost, uh, some DC comics that I picked up and have been wanting to read. I t like I said in a couple comics ago, like my last comic review, I, was, I bought some new DC books because my DC collection it's pretty big, but not as big as the Marvel or Independent collection. So I thought I'd beef those. I thought I'd bump those numbers up with some comic reviews. And starting off, we're going to be talking about Night Terrors. For those who don't know, Night Terrors was DC's summer big horror event. Which um, I don't know why you did a horror event in the summer instead of like wait till like closer to fall. But then again, Beast World was coming out at that time, so I guess that was the thing. I guess that was a kept it at bay. And yeah, so this comic is written by Joshua Williamson with um, Howard Porter and Giuseppe Camincoli on artwork. This comic is... It's always nice to see a DC event that doesn't involve like a crisis or a multiverse or something of that nature. It's always good to see like an event like that. Right? Like it's always good to see an event that doesn't involve like a crisis or a you know the multiverse is coming to end because it, it does kind of like it never hurts to like deviate from that right like it never hurts to like occasionally deviate from that line am i right like it doesn't it never hurts to do that so what is this story about well this story is about a new villain called insomniac and Insomniac wants revenge on the Justice League for accidentally killing his family during Dark during Dark Knight's Metal. Well, they weren't they didn't accidentally kill him. It was like just a random act of, of destruction during the events of Dark Knight's Metal. His family dies, and then this also ties in a bit with Lazarus Planet, where you know the Lazarus Reign gave powers to everybody to a bunch of characters no one gives a shit about. Um, Insomniac wasn't one of those characters. He got power from the Lazarus Reign, and now wa wants to find a thing that um, Dr. Destiny was scared of. Even Dr. Destiny was scared of. The Nightmare Stone. And in order to do that, Insomniac goes into the dream world and starts unleashing every hero and villain's um, subconscious nightmares into the world. And the reason being is because that's where um, the Nightmare Stone... Uh, Insomniac believes the Nightmare Stone was hidden. So, from the title, I mean, from the cover, you might think that, you know, the Trinity are, for, are, uh, are front and center. And I, even I was like, alright, this is going to be a... It's obviously a Justice League story. It's not going to be a big thing. And really, it's a dead man story. That's what I really like, is that Batman really only plays a part of being dead man's host i mean he does have some stuff to do and damien also teams up but really this is a, a night terrors is a is a dead man comic and i really like that i really like that this is a comic that focuses more on a lesser known like but still known favorite among the dc fans not only that dead man event it has to resurrect someone who might know about the nightmare stone and that is wesley dodd the San, the original sandman so we have Zombie Sa Sandman and Dead Man as the two ma as our two mains, but Damien does team up with them later. And that doesn't really factor in. Insomniac is just kind of a their villain. This is really this comic feels like it was meant more for the tie-ins than anything else. Like it really does feel like this is one of those events where even though the tie-in uh, like the tie-ins don't really factor into this main event, you could read this without the tie-ins. Um, the problem is, is that it feels like this comic was made for the sole purpose of doing the tie-ins, just so you can get new, like you could get new, um, you know, cool, creepy art, and that's really what it is. Like, do you remember how many tie-ins this book had when this was coming out? Like, it was all like a bunch of two-parters, yeah. But like, um, it really did feel like, and I do stress this, it really did feel like. It was more for the for the uh, artwork and design, and I got to be honest, the artwork is really good in here. Um, there's some great twisted artwork um, in this book. Um, I really do enjoy. Um, I really enjoyed like the EC comic feel to it. Again, like it really like Joshua William clear uh, Joshua Williamson clearly knows how to do a horror book or at least give horror imagery. 
or at the very least to that, um, have the right people, the right artists uh, do this. All this is missing is Francis Francavelia, and you've got a great horror comic. Although I do think he did one of the tie-ins. I can't remember which. But yeah. So it is cool to see an event that we have where, where the main three, especially Batman, isn't the main focus. Even though, yes, Batman is in the comic technically, but it's Dead Man possessing him all the way through. So it is cool that it's focusing more on Dead Man and Sandman um, as our two main protagonists. But again, I feel like this was more written for like um, the tie-ins just so we could do weird, bizarre stuff with, with those characters. And also sell some action figures because, well, I'm sure you've seen the design of the Nightmare Batman who's just a giant bat monster with a gun head. Basically, he's a fucking Maximal. <laughs> the other thing that kind of perplexed me about this story was that while it was cool to use Dr. Destiny in here, the difference being is that, Insom first off, Insomniac is not an interesting villain. Even his motives are like, The Justice League killed my family! Oh, f get in fucking line, asshole. Um, he's not an interesting threat. Like, he is, um, <laughs> uh, dark side, he is not. And also, his motivation is just kind of generic. Oh, my family died, and I blame the Justice League because they got to be resurrected after Dark Crisis, and my family, you know, my family didn't. Which, I get it, fa dead family sucks, but, like, that's every emotional villain ever. Like, that's, ev like, that's such a bare-bones vengeance story. Um, but... Yeah. Um, the the other, like I said, so Insomniac isn't the is like a, isn't a strong villain, and I hope he, I really hope he doesn't come back. I really hope this guy does not fucking come back. Also, another thing that, while, like I said, going back to the original point, that while it was cool to use Doctor Destiny as like a catalyst for all of this, I was kind of hoping we'd use Sandman. Like, and yes, we do use Wesley Dodd. I'm talking about Morpheus. I'm talking like Neil Gaiman's Sandman. Like Daniel, like Daniel or Morpheus as our main folk, as like part of this comic. Because I'm like, you mean to tell, because I was like reading this whole comic and I'm like, you mean to tell me real quick, just, just real quick. Like, just hold on a second. You mean to tell me right to my fucking face that this villain who is connected to the dream world invades the dream world and pulls the nightmares and dreams out of that world into reality isn't going to shake up some cages in the it, with Morpheus or any of the of the endless I mean yeah and you could say oh but they're different universes oh yeah tell that to when um dream showed up in dark knights metal or I don't know when death showed up in action comics and had a conversation with Lex fucking Luthor I'm just saying like I don't know if like DC prevented them, uh, like prevented Williamson from using Sam, the um, using Morpheus. I w and if that's the case, I uh, I get it. But like at the same time, you're doing all this stuff with dream characters, and you do jack all of like ref even like referencing or even like throwing in an Easter egg of what's going on with Morpheus and all them. Um, all in all. I do like this story. It is dumb fun. Like it's dumb fun, and Insomniac's just di is like Dollar General Freddy Krueger, but it is a fun story. If only for like it's a Dead Man comic, um, hidden behind a DC event, and it also is cool to see Wesley Dodd in here as like a zombie, and it's all like this is what I love about like with DC comics is that. They will really push a lot of characters that are like sidebar. Whereas with Marvel, they'll only, it, like they'll rarely ever like focus on other characters outside. Like they'll show up in other books and maybe even get a miniseries or two. But there are character like every there are so many DC characters thanks to like animation and other things that made people go, I like him <laughs> or I like her. So you know you can't uh, fault that. So. Do I re would I recommend um, Night Terrors? Yeah, but probably wait for paperback. This was hardcover. I got this because my co I had a special ten dollar off discount with my uh, comic store. I got this from. So yeah, um, probably wait for paperback at the very least. It's a good comic. It's a neat story. It's just like um, also the other thing that I think hurts it just a wee bit is that. It taught, it's like all these events since Lazarus Planet are all just... It, it, this also has a bit of um, connection to Beast... It builds into Beast World 
and obviously it's all roads leading to absolute power which is the upcoming event as of this recording coming this summer um yeah but yeah it's still pretty fun i think you could still read this event you probably all like i'm not getting i don't think I'm, i want to get the tie-ins because it's all it is is just ooh, character has a bad dream and sees creepy shit moving on yeah and those tra those trades, I've seen the uh, like they're all all those trades and collected issues. They all are like over thirty dollars. I'm like fuck that noise. I I know. <laughs> anyway, so there you go. That's my late night review of Night Terrors. Um, yeah. So there you go. Hope you all enjoyed this. I'm Mr. Multiverse. I'll see you next time in the multiverse. <laughs>